Hey guys, I am getting ready to ship off a pre-screen of 25 modern comics to CGC and I thought I would make a video on packing them up. Also, uh, testing out my new microphone today. So it's a, a Rode one that plugs into your iPhone. We'll see how that goes as well. I'm hoping for some uh, improvements in my audio quality. So anyways, uh, back to the process here. If you haven't done pre-screens before, you basically have to submit a minimum of 25 books and you specify the grade that you want to pre-screen for. So you would say 9.8 or 9.6 or something like that. Most times if you're doing this, you're doing 9.8s. And they're going to review the books beforehand and make sure that they meet the minimum level of uh, the grade that you specify and if they don't they'll reject the book and you don't pay the grading fees and if they do they'll move on to grading so if you are sending a bunch of books and you weigh out that a 9.6 is just not worth the, the $30 for a modern fast track pre uh, uh, grade then you can reject that and if you're pressing then you uh, can maybe take another try at improving the book or move on to trying to get another book like that to grade out so I do this quite often 25 is the minimum for uh, or the minimum and then it's also the number of an invoice so every 25 books is going to go on a new invoice and in this case you want to I mean you don't want to send 26 books because they're going to charge you another five dollar invoice fee and then there might have additional shipping charges if all 26 grade out so if you want to do them you should do them in sets of 25 or you can do 25 and 15 one uh, one day I'll make a video on actually completing that form because there's a couple tricks if you're trying to do custom labels with it. So you can do custom labels with just 25. They will be on two separate invoices. You'll still be able to pre-screen them, but it gets a little complicated when you go to add those uh, those comics into the uh, system, the submission system. So to go back to uh, packing them up, uh, I kind of have over here stacks of five. So I'll put five in a box. And if you notice, I have my really uh, nice uh, my light. So I'll show you the five books that I have right here. So I have uh, a couple Silk Number One Second Prints, a Spawn 309. Let's see what else is here. And then a couple of the Ninja Spawn One for Five variants from 3010. So if you see how I have them stacked, all of these books that I submit have been pressed. And I want to make sure that they arrive in CGC's hands the exact same way that I'm packaging them up. And so it's very important to take your time and not rush this part. Also, you'll notice that I have my nice Mylars. Like I said, I don't cheap out when it comes to this part. Anytime I press a book, I want to make sure that those books are protected. The cost of these are um, trivial in terms of the amount of money that you're investing and time you're investing in pressing and submitting books. So I always put them in, uh, in nice bags and boards. They're in full backs, which I think is very important. Let's see, I have, a, I have an example of a halfback here. So this is a halfback. And actually if you, sorry, I wasn't planning on doing that, but kind of segued into it. So uh, this is a 720 or 700 fullback board from Gerber. This is a halfback board. And you'll notice with the halfback, you get flex. These are great boards. They're a little less expensive, probably half the price of the fullbacks. Uh, and they're great for maybe your everyday books that you're not your $40 or $100 variants or something. So just look at that flex. And then these are the fullback boards. Make sure I'm getting a camera angle right here. So these are the fullback boards uh, and they are stiff, right? I mean, you put the comic in there and they are not going anywhere. So again, let me just make sure that I got it in the right orientation. You'll see that flex. And then here are the flex with the halfback. So again, no wobble, all right? And so all of my boards get packed in 725 uh, M's, uh, Mylar's, and then this fullback. So I know that they're not moving around. Also, I like the size because you'll, you'll see how the, the comic is kind of framed in, oh, I'll, I'll pick one that's not a white cover. Let me see, all right, here we go. So you'll see how the comic is framed in that board and bag. There's not a, there's, it's not the, the exact size of the comic, which is what you want. You, if you want to, if you accidentally drop this or banged against something, you don't want the comic edge to hit, you want the backer board edge to hit. And these full back boards will take a lot of force before they, they crumble. 
And so I find that this size is perfect uh, for bags and boards. It frames the comic nicely. There's not an exposed edge. The backs are really protected and nothing's gonna pierce this. And plus, your, your comics look bad, badass in them. Look at that, they're beautiful. A the nice, crisp, clear uh, uh, mylar. All right, so the, the next step that I'll do, let me just reorient a little bit. Okay, there we go. Uh, is when you stack these books, you want to put them cover to cover. All right, so I'll put it, I'll put the cover down. This one goes on top. And of course, there's an odd number, so you're not going to wind up with all of them like that. But then I'll sandwich these, and they're going to go on top too. All right. And look at that. They're all the exact same size. So there's not one comic that if something got dinged around, it would get damaged. They all are uh, equally oriented. So again, look at how they fit like that, right? And this is how people suggest keeping them in your uh, comic boxes too, so that they don't, uh, you don't get that, that additional bend. So if you did them like this with all of the bends, with all of the spines to the same side, look at how uneven that is, all right? I'm giving it equal pressure right now. And that's exactly what you don't want in your comic boxes, and it's not what you want when you're packaging them. So that's why you put them uh, cover to cover, all right? When you're packing them, and if you can tolerate it, it makes it a pain to kind of look through your books, but if you can tolerate it, do that when you're putting them in boxes. They'll uh, they'll stay a lot flatter. You won't get that uh, spine, that stacking curl, as it's called, from uh, keeping them all in the same direction. All right, or especially if you're not using full backboards. All right. So again, look at that, all even, both sides. All right. So I have them in there. I have a large bag. Sometimes I don't necessarily have these bags. But they're nice. You can always use uh, a little bit of uh, plastic wrap or something. Or if you don't, you can use the painter's tape. Now, if you're not, a, if you don't have this stuff laying around your house and you do comic books, do even comic book, bro, because you use this stuff all the time. Do not use regular tape on, uh, you know, packaging tape on your your boards and bags or when you're shipping stuff to people. You will drive them crazy. They will be sitting there with an X-Acto knife or a scissors or a razor blade trying to cut their comic books out of the packaging material that you use. So save them the hassle and the headache and the risk of damaging their books and send it, get them, get the painter's tape and use that. All right. You saw I just basically, I had these bags. I don't know the model of these. I'll have to look it up to see which one the, the models are or, or which, uh, which bags these are. But I think they're perfect for five books. And I have a little bit of, of painter's tape, of course, be a nice guy to the CGC people. They use razor blades too to cut these, but you know, put a little tab right there so they can pull it off and then uh, tape this close like that. All right, so this pack is ready to go and I'm gonna keep going with packaging this one up. You see it's nice and stable, nothing's moving around. So I have here, uh, you know, of course, reuse your comic mailers. Hopefully people are using comic mailers or uh, will be nice to uh, each other and not send pieces of cardboard like this taped together with packaging tape inside of a bubble envelope, which, you know, I, like I said, I, I don't skimp out when it comes to, to some of the, the comic book kind of ancillary surprise. So uh, boards and bags I pay for, these things I pay for and I reuse them. You know, and people who you send them to will you reuse them to. So this is a kind of thicker one. You know, it's not the normal, let's see if I have one. I think this is probably your standard one, all right, standard thickness one. This is one that is kind of more of the CGC side, so if you ever get raw books back from the pre-screen that they reject, they'll be in something like this. Actually, I have one right here. That's the one that will send you the book back. This is the same one they use in the shipping kit. Super heavy duty, really thick corrugated cardboard, and your books are well protected in there. It's also a little larger, so you don't have to shove in these five books. So. Uh, I think I might have lost track of my order in there. Okay, yeah, I see which books in back. All right, so I have this uh, this box. Now, this stuff kind of depends on whether whether your uh, the size of your box. All right, <laughs> so it depends how thick it is and how much room there is in it. But if there's a, a good amount of room, you don't want your boards and your comics moving around. You can add a little bit of bubble wrap. Some people you know, are against, maybe against this step too because it, it gives a little too movement to the, to the boards or to the comics. But uh, this is a big, this is a thin stack, relatively thin stack because those spawn books are pretty thin. So I'm gonna add this, uh, this really thin bubble wrap 
to the outside, tape that up. And then this is gonna go inside the mailer. Now I'm going to secure, you know, you don't have to get crazy with this, but I, I mean, I get to, you, I'm sure you've got them too. You get some of these, uh, these packages and you open them up and somebody's taped them to, to, like they thought they were going through a war, which, you know, sometimes USPS can, can be like that. But for this purpose, they're already well packaged. This is already gonna be really secure. So that, that suffices, all right? And then I'm gonna close this up. All right, I'm gonna tape that. And then I, it's kind of funny because I always wonder, are you an over person or an under person? So I, I tend to like them like this. This one was already taped like that. I'll go ahead and uh, tape it like that as well. Now you can bust out your, uh, your tape. All right, so that is not going anywhere. Those comics are gonna to get to CGC just like I packaged them up. It's nice and pressed and nice bags and boards. And the good thing about the bags and boards too is if you get rejects and they send it back to you, your boards, your, your comics aren't trashed, all right? So I'm gonna do five of these. I have my packing slip here, so I'm gonna look and see which order those were. And this is my number two box. And if you uh, start watching my videos, you're gonna see that I am a little bit of an OCD person. As you can see, you know, I don't skip out on the packaging material. Uh, they say on the CGC website that you can delay your order if you put your things in, in, in the different order that they were in the submission form. I try to make it as easy as possible. And if we all made it easier for them, I'm sure they would uh, increase their turnaround times. So I make it easy. I notate on my submission form which box everything is in, and then I put a number on each of these. So these will be boxes one through five. This is box number two, and I'm gonna do five more like that. Now, one thing I'll show you, just to show how OCD I really am, and you're, I'm gonna ask you this question, you're gonna know whether you are too, but have you ever thought about uh, organizing your submission forms in alphabetical and numerical order? Now this isn't perfect, but I tend to like to organize everything, especially since when I'm packing them, I, uh, I like to make sure that I put them in the order that, that I'm sending them so I don't send them the wrong books and I make sure that I got everything. So I put them in alphabetical order the best I can so that when I put them in there, I know which books and in, uh, in which container. And so this is what the submission form looks like for, uh, for 25 books. A lot of them are duplicates. So I'll organize them, as I said, into five boxes. As you see that I relatively have them in alphabetical order. I have the declared value, the variance that they are, and payment information and stuff on there too. And then again, I'll note on that. And I actually print two packing slips. I put one, again, going back to my OCD, I put two packing slips in there. One will be on the first box, numbered one, and the other one will be on the top of the container. You know, just for any kind of uh, odd things that may occur, and we end up with uh, one of the packing slips getting damaged or lost, there's always that, that extra packing slip in there. So, you know, military adage, two is one and one is none. I try to live by that as well and, and uh, always works out for me. So I, uh, I like to keep it, keep it uh, very neat and organized. Again, I want them to have uh, no issues unpacking or checking in my books. So I'm gonna go ahead and pack up the, the remainder of these five boxes and then we'll come back to see how we put them in the, in the shipping container. Okay, here we go. So I've completed boxing up the additional five sets of five. I'm reusing a, I guess, what is considered the medium-sized box from CGC. And I have uh, all five of those packages here. They have the corrugated cardboard on the bottom. They also have some old uh, boxes, I believe those are probably from Scorpion, padding the outside. And they're all in the center. And then on top of this, I am going to close it up just like you would get it from CGC with another piece of corrugated box. My second invoice or uh, packing slip goes on top. Remember, I also attached one to the first box just in case, you know, this box opens up and this thing flies out. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and seal this up, print the packing label, and it'll be ready to go.